Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering DevNet Create 2017. Brought to you by Cisco. Welcome back everyone, live in San Francisco, this is theCUBE's exclusive coverage of the inaugural event for Cisco Systems, DevNet Creates, an extension or augmentation, a foot in the water of the new open source world for them, cloud native DevOps, infrastructure as code. It's Cisco's new mission, where applications meets infrastructure, AKA infrastructure as code, which is music to the ears of DevOps and all application developers. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Peter Burris, head of research at wikibon.com. Our next guest is Bradley Wong, director of product management at Docker. Uh, Bradley, welcome to theCUBE, great to see you again. Yeah, great, thanks John. Docker, no other company to reference in terms of being a, um, a shining star in a shift of a paradigm shift or transformation where containers, Docker containers, and now containers and Kubernetes microservices has taken cloud and brought it into a whole nother dimension. Um, we've been covering you guys at all your DockerCon events. It's been great, multiple years. Uh, congratulations on your success. Um, you got to be happy that you got Cisco coming out saying, hey, we're going to make this in-network programmable, finally. You know, let's <laughs> do it. Thoughts? Yeah, no, we're uh, we're very excited about that. Um, you know, we uh, it's kind of interesting because we also found that uh, you know net networking is also uh, one of those things that's uh, quite difficult. Um, and uh, you know, we saw this challenge probably about uh, more than two years ago, after people started getting more comfortable with uh, containers and they wanted to start doing some more interesting things with them and start getting the containers to talk to each other and the rest of the world. Uh, that's kind of really where we saw that uh, you know networking couldn't be improved upon, yeah. and uh, you know I think you rem maybe remember probably about two years ago now that or maybe more actually uh, we made an acquisition uh, company called Socket Plane yep. that uh, really helped us define what it means to to really do networking properly, and uh, that was actually the genesis of where even the the, the Cisco partnership also started evolving as well because. Uh, at Docker, we really needed to, to build out a, a framework for, for how to do networking properly internally first. And we always follow the mantra, the mandate of batteries included but swappable. Yeah. So you know, we built a reference uh, implementation of what it meant to do networking properly for containers. But in doing so, we also then work uh, quite closely uh, with, uh, with Cisco to, uh, to also bring their many, many years of, of expertise uh, to, to the table as well. So, um, and you can probably see that now with the yeah. culmination of uh, projects like Contiv, uh, which is actually now a, uh, uh, a certified plugin on Docker Store, uh, that uh, the Cisco has really stepped it up and has, has, has really made, that made lots of really great, great inroads and, and, and done a lot of uh, good, uh, good, good um, additions to, 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 yeah. to Docker networking. It always seems that way. I mean, uh, you know, the conversation we've been also following a lot of other communities, like OpenStack, for instance, there's always debates, but it always gets down to, hey, the network, <laughs> network, you know. And you know, I've had so many countries with, let's say, Randy Bias about the, the issues around it. It's really hard. And also you see Cisco get pulled into conversations just, just with gravity pulling them in because they're the network guys. So now it's nice to see that the executives uh, at Cisco, led by Susie Wee and the team, right. and Rick, not just putting their toe in the water, they're jumping in the deep end here with the cloud, uh, with the cloud native approach yeah. by going to developers and outreaching to them in a different way and saying, look, we want to make your life easier. Absolutely. That's what you guys have done. So and certainly a success to you guys for, and Cisco doing the work around the fringes, but now that they're coming in, how do you, how would you tell someone, describe that, that move for Cisco? I mean, obviously Cisco hasn't not been absent, they've been there with you guys. Yeah. What does this really mean for them as they go fully committing here now? Right, yeah, that's a good question. And you know, Cisco is beyond just a, obviously a networking company. That's kind of where its roots came from. But uh, you know, we saw that there was some good opportunities to work with Cisco, not just on networking, but a few other things. I think what a lot of people probably get familiar with Docker because it's, it's a great developer tool to, to start. And, uh, and that's really where people's first uh, interactions with, with, with Docker really is. It's really easy to get started, really easy to start building your applications in Docker and start moving those uh, applications into other environments, like going from dev into test into prod very, very seamlessly. So Docker really becomes that sort of what we call a software supply chain uh, that really enables dev and ops to use the same tooling, the same tool chain end to end. And, we feel that if we're able to use the same tool chain end to end from dev all the way through to ops, we alleviate a lot of the, the challenges to deploying applications in production. 
Now, Cisco so far has been very, very strong in the ops space, very strong in the infrastructure space. And we also come very, very strongly from the uh, developer space as well. So I think as we basically build out this software supply chain, there also is a need to make sure that there is this yeah. kind of underlying infrastructure that's also ready to, to, to run that software supply chain as well and to really harden it. And that's what one of the first things that we really did with, with Cisco is to make sure that we have a very clear vision of, of how to make that operationalizable uh, yeah. for the enterprise. Second time I heard the word software supply chain, Peter's mm -hmm. also used the word data supply chain. Right. Data is asset, it's also going to be software. Software is an asset, it's data as well. What is software supply chain mean? Describe that for a second, take a minute to well, explain. Well, so, yeah, I mean, that's a good, good question. So in any supply chain, I think there's, there's sort of a progression of where there's sort of inputs where things sort of come in, and for us, we are in a mission to build tools of mass innovation, so we really want to sort of start with the developer, and that's really where a lot of really good stuff comes from. Everyone's got great ideas, and we piece those ideas together, give them the tools that they know how to use really well to develop them. But it's, it's not just good to have great applications, they need to be usable, and they need to be, be able to be deployed. And what we believe is a software supply chain is taking that development process and being able to have developers uh, put their uh, artifacts inside containers and then move those, because that's really what it is, it's actually moving those artifacts into uh, places where they can be shared with greater teams to start testing those and to start iterating on those. And ultimately to move those into production, whether it's on-premise or whether it's, uh, it's in the cloud. Uh, and that's what we believe that we enable, is that movement of- Code and in that, motion. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, and, and it doesn't stop there, because as you know, code is not stable, that always, there's always a, uh, an iterative process, and, and we enable that as well. So then as, as we find issues or enhancements that we want to fix in production, we move that back to developer and that, that whole process starts again. And be able to do that really, really quickly is, is, is what we want to do. So let's stay in that metaphor for a second. Um, if, if we think about this is a software supply chain, does that make Cisco a logistics supplier? I would say with any supply chain, um, so Cisco once again has lots of lots of different areas that they're focusing in, and you know by no means am I speaking on behalf of Cisco of where where, just where they I mean, are. are. Are they are they the 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 rider trucking? Are they the ones responsible for moving things around? Yeah, so that's that's one of the places that Cisco does play very very strongly in. So, um, for example, we identified that uh, the the compute platform that Cisco has, the UCS platform is a great place to actually run Docker in production, uh, especially on premise. And that's definitely one of the things that uh, we needed to, to, to start validating all these different infrastructures that uh, can actually have the right availability, the right performance characteristics, and uh, things that then we can do together to make sure that these are uh, essentially solid infrastructures to actually run these production environments on. Now, Cisco's been running solid enterprise infrastructure for many, many years. Uh, Docker's been running uh, Dockerized applications also for many years as well. The marriage of the two, we hope and we believe, that will culminate in a lot of the enterprises which we're very um, uh, comfortable with running enterprise applications on, to on top of enterprise infrastructure to now run Docker applications on enterprise infrastructure as well. So just making sure that there is very, very good infrastructure that's in place to actually host that supply chain. I think that's definitely one of the key areas that we are hoping to get out of this partnership with Cisco. So the other we've, we've talked about uh, here in the last couple of days a fair amount is Conway's Law, and I'm sure you're familiar with Conway's Law. Right. Um, uh, which is basically the observation that the software that's generated is a reflection of the organization that generated it. Sure. Um, you can use Docker or any other container technology to create really crappy software if you want to. Yeah. Uh, but one of the things that Docker does introduce is the idea of segmentation, compartmentalization, while at the same time simplified mechanics for how things work <coughs> together. So talk a little bit about the expectations that people who get into the Docker and container world should have of the network. How should they think about, you know, they should they think about their software as essentially distributed elements that then require a network? What's your thoughts on that architecturally? How is it going to play out? 
yeah, I mean, it really depends on where that journey sits. Um, you know, I think we're, uh, once again, I think we are the, um, the suppliers of these tools of innovation. So, but you know, we want to also hold their hands as well uh, through this journey. And that journey is not done day one. It's, it's a step-by-step it's a, it's, it's -step process as well. So a good example is, um, you know, you can start off and build the, the, the greatest uh, distributed microservices application, uh, and that might work well for, uh, for certain parts of your company, but uh, there's certainly many, many other uh, applications that are already deployed out there which it may not fit, at least not today. And there's a journey to take those existing traditional applications along that journey as well. So anything that basically uh, requires interaction with other components, any services that need to talk to each other, to the external world, obviously requires a network. Networking has been a very, very tough thing in the past. Uh, they're not always the simplest. Sometimes it could be overcomplicated. Um, you know, Sometimes. <laughs> in many, 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 many times. <laughs> I, I, you know, honestly, I do think that the that network professionals have gone out of their way to make the network as obscure and abstract as possible. You know, I think, your command line guys, come on. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know yeah. I, I think, you know, to, to, I mean, I've been in the networking world for, for a long time as well before <laughs> joining Docker, so I, I, I see some of that. Um, you know, I think networking guys tend to, and, and girls, tend to really look at what are all the different things that we can do, all the different uh, little knobs that we can actually tweak to, to squeeze every little bit of performance, convergence time, things like that. That might work well in some environments, but, but may not others. So that's why you needed so much variability and, and uh, hence all these nerd knobs, so to speak. Docker comes from a very different place. Yeah. If, I think if you look at uh, the, the mentality of, of how we drive things, um, usability is a, is a very, very key thing for us. Uh, we talk about usable security. We talk about you know, a simple orchestrator through Swarm, for example. Uh, we forego the complex to, 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 to focus on things that are, are usable. So networking for us, we wanted to initially look at it and say networking should, should be something that's simple and usable and essentially kind of get out of the way of the developer. Develop, developers shouldn't have to think about all these kind of overcomplicated concepts. Like the network should be able to form its way around what the application needs. Uh, and that's really kind of what we're sort of thinking about there. Make it simpler and no simpler than it needs. And make it programmable. And make it programmable as well, and simple and programmable. And when I say programmable, it doesn't have to, like we're not expecting ops folks to, to have to learn how to, how, to, how, to, how, to, how, to, how to code necessarily. I think if there's the right tools that are available, that should be a natural flow they on. They have to enable it so that the app developer doesn't have to do all the hard stuff like configuration management, all the, exactly. you know, the hardware and the, the operational stuff that the networking guys have done for right. them. Because um, mm -hmm. they're, they're not ops guys, right? They're, de they're devs. That's a really good point because today, there is not really one single tool chain, and coming back to my earlier point of what we're trying to solve for, there's not really one single tool chain that ops guys, ops folks use and application developers use. They traditionally use different tooling what we're trying to do is first to, to have that common foundation of, of common tooling that people can, can, can converge on. And the second then is if we provide all the right hooks, so just enough hooks for the application developer to say, this is what my application looks like, and then enough hooks for the operations folks to then plug in and say, hey, these are my security policies. These should talk to these and these shouldn't talk to these. And, and, and once we have the, the right ingestion points there, we should be able to bit, they take that end to end without having to manually ingest all these different uh, after the fact uh, concepts into, into that development process. That should be a natural flow on. Uh, we're not saying the work is done there, there's still a lot of things to do, but I think the, the first glimpse of, of what we have there is, is, is starting. Docker, as you, you may know, there has uh, some great tools to define what an application is. Docker Compose, for example, you can see how a multi-service application is laid out. Uh, Cisco can actually then uh, provide plugins into that Compose file and say, well, this web uh, tier needs to talk to this application tier, and these are the basic premises of what uh, networking security tools can then plug into to enforce policy. So we feel that that can be a lot more automated, and we'll work towards that. Really, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. Great to see you uh, again. 
Um, and Docker, obviously, continuing to do great and uh, will continue to cover all your events. But my final question for you is take a minute to just explain short, quickly uh, and succinctly for the audience the Docker Cisco relationship. What is it? I mean, joint partnership? Is it just you guys just high fiving each other? Are you actually <laughs> writing code together? Is there a technology partnership? G give some details on the relationship. Yeah, sure. I mean, we um, uh, we it, it's it's a strategic partnership, which basically means that it it goes beyond just uh, high fiving each other. There's <laughs> There's some of that as well, but uh, you know, we, we believe in there's a. It needs to be any relationship of, of this size needs to be built on solid, uh, uh, attainable things. So uh, we made we worked on say the Contiv uh, uh, project together, for example. We also work together on um, what we call Cisco Validated Designs for Docker. This is joint engineering. Joint engineering okay. work. Uh, we also work on joint. Uh, um, uh, marketing and, and joint go-to-market uh, motions as well, and joint support. So you can actually call up Cisco for a, a Docker Cisco solution that's deployed out there. You can call up Cisco support and they will hold that trouble ticket, and uh, if any tick troubles do arise, they will take the, they take the call and then work on that It's a uh, nice relationship, it's a win-win. They get some cloud-native mojo with Docker in this new app world, you right. guys get enterprise access to the huge amount of clients that they have. Exactly. Um, all right, final, final question, since <laughs> one just popped in my head. It sure. always happens that way when you're going to roll, but what's on the roadmap for you guys with respect to the, the Cisco and, the, and this DevNet Create, obviously, is going to, their foray into this new world sure. of bringing a new ecosystem together with DevNet, their core application, I mean, their core developer community. What's on the Docker roadmap? What can we expect to see that's going to be fruits on the, on the, on, of the labor? Yeah, I think uh, one of the things that we're uh, definitely going to be focusing quite a lot on is, is to, to look at um, uh, that, that first step of that journey, um, and which is even taking not just the microservices that uh, everyone loves to talk about, but the, even the traditional applications, those monolithic applications that are already deployed out there running mission critical enterprise mm -hmm. uh, workloads on there. We want to take those together with uh, partnerships like Cisco and, and Dockerize those and eventually modernize them and, uh, and eventually evolve them into microservices. Yeah, might get those mission critical apps microservicized, if that's a word. <laughs> <laughs> Bradley Wong, Director of Product Management, great to see you, thanks for coming on theCUBE's live coverage with theCUBE here at the Cisco's inaugural event. Again, great show, Griffith Cisco, I'm John Furrier with, with Peter Burst. More analysis and commentary and interviews after this short break. Hi, I'm April Mitchell, and I'm the Senior Director of Strategy